All right, we're looking at the subject of rewards, the opposite side of it. The question is, when you don't get rewards, what happens? If you haven't been faithful enough to get rewarded in this Christian life, what happens when you don't get them? Uh, objectors to free grace salvation. Salvation by grace through faith, and that of not of yourselves, the gift of God, not by works, lest any man should boast. That's what the Bible says, and there are many who object to that idea. I didn't write that. That's Ephesians 2, 8, and 9 and uh, the equivalent in many other places, like even John 3.16, Jesus simply believed. But they point to Matthew chapter 22 as a proof text for their ideas, their false doctrine that one's lifestyle must reflect some unspecified amount and type of faithful works. Otherwise, one is not saved at all or will lose one's salvation and be cast into the lake of fire. So we look at 22 of Matthew 1-14. And Jesus answered and spoke to them again in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding feast for his son. And he sent out his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding feast, and they were unwilling to come. And again he sent out other slaves, saying, Tell those who have been invited, Behold, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and my fattened livestock are all butchered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding feast. But they paid no attention and went their way, one to his own farm, another to his own business. And the rest seized his slaves and mistreated them and killed them. Some invitation. But the king was enraged and sent his armies and destroyed those murderers and set their city on fire. Then he said to his slaves, <clears throat> The wedding is ready, but those who were invited were not worthy. Go there, therefore to the main highways, and as many as you find there, invite to the wedding feast. And those slaves went out into the streets and gathered together all they found, both evil and good. And the wedding hall was filled with dinner guests. And when the king came in to look over the dinner guests, he saw there was a man not dressed in wedding clothes. And he said to him, Friend, how did you come in here without wedding clothes? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the servants, Bind him hand and foot, and cast him out into the outer darkness. In that place there will be, there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. If you don't read this carefully, you'll go way far afield from what it's actually saying. So a careful examination of this parable provides the following parallel statements. Just as the king is holding a wedding banquet for his son, so there will be a banquet in the kingdom of heaven on earth, which New Testament Revelation teaches that God the Father will hold a wedding banquet for his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, in Revelation 19, 7 to 9. And just as this specific group of individuals were at first invited to attend, so those of the nation Israel were invited to be part of the banquet held on earth during the, our Lord's millennial rule. Revelation uh, reference Matthew 10, 1 to 42, Luke 9, 1 to 6, and Mark 6, 7 to 13. And just as the first group was rejected, the invitation attacked and murdered the king's servants. So the Jews rejected the Son of God as Messiah, attacked and murdered his prophets, disciples, and other faithful believers and himself. Just as the king sent his armies, destroyed the murderers, and set their city on fire, so God decreed and history showed that Rome would likewise send an army, destroy millions of Jews, and burn the city of Jerusalem in A.D. 70. Luke 19, 41-43 corroborates this. And just as the king thereupon extended his invitation to all who would come to his son's banquet from all over, all over the earth, so our Lord then extended his invitation to accept him as Messiah's Savior to whosoever will believe in him as Savior. Matthew 28, 19, Luke 24, 46-49, Acts 1, 8, 10, 43. So just as those who did not accept the king's invitation did not attend the banquet of their own volition, so those who do not, did not accept God's invitation to believe in His Son unto eternal life, 1 John 5, 9-13, will not attend the wedding banquet of their Messiah, especially in view of those to whom our Lord was speaking, the Jews, who felt that it would be their exclusive destiny to take part in the kingdom banquet. John 8, 38, John 8, 39, and 9, 28. So just as the individual who chose not to wear the proper wedding garment was bound and cast out of the banquet itself, remember this, out of the banquet itself, so those who are not wearing the proper attire representing faithful lives will be likewise cast, cast out of the Lord's wedding banquet, 
both to experience weeping and gnashing of teeth, but get this, at their utter disappointment at their great loss of fellowship for the rest of eternity with God. Matthew twenty five, fourteen to thirty. Now question this, but neither were cast out of their respective kingdoms. It doesn't say that, it's out of the banquet. Just as God invites all to believe and be saved, but only those who are chosen by him will be saved, so God invites all believers to be faithful, but only those who are chosen by him will be faithful. Just as every tear will be wiped away, and there will be no more sorrow when God finally rec recreates the new heavens and the new earth, so there will be a season of sorrow and regret beforehand for those who did not serve the Lord faithfully. And finally, just as the faithful will enter heaven with maximum capacity, to serve the Lord and enjoy eternity, so the unfaithful believer will be limited in such capacities. And he will regret that to the point of weeping and gnashing of teeth, especially being in his resurrection body and being ready, willing, and able to serve. But God said, no, you weren't faithful to me in the temple life. So let's go back over this to verify these points. This is a parable of the kingdom of heaven on the earth presented by Jesus to the Jewish rulers. We look at 22, 1 and 2. Jesus spoke to them again in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a king who prepared a wedding banquet for his son. So there, the overall kingdom of heaven is a huge expanse of many different experiences, wide span. But we're focusing on Matthew 22, focusing in on the camera, zooming in on the kingdom of heaven and the wedding banquet that the king, God, prepared for his son, Jesus Christ. To whom was Jesus speaking? He was speaking to his enemies, the Jewish rulers. <clears throat> Sp speak, Jesus spoke to them again. Them refers to the religious leader of Israel, the leaders of Israel who were looking for a way to destroy Christ and his ministry without harming themselves with a position of power, which was controlled by Rome. Compare Matthew 21, 23, which indicates to whom Christ was primarily speaking. We're going into the who, what, why, where, when, and to whom of it, the necessary uh, application to understanding any written material. Matthew 21, 23. Note that Matthew 21, 23 begins the section which contains the passage we're examining, which is in Matthew 22. Matthew 21, 23. And when he, Jesus, had come into the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, By what authority are you doing these things, and who gave you this authority? So the point of view of those to whom the Lord was speaking was Jewish, and the attitude was hostile. Later verses in Matthew indicate the extent to which these leaders will go to rid themselves of the threat of our Lord's ministry. Compare verses 21, 23, 25b to 27, and 45 to 46. Nevertheless, our Lord is staying on the theme that is contained in Matthew 21, 31 to 32, and that is the rejection of him as Messiah and those who will be there in the kingdom of heaven at his millennial reign. Remember, you don't get into the millennial reign kingdom of heaven unless you're a believer. Bible Knowledge Commentary says, Jesus had in mind the effect of the nation Israel's rejection of him. God had made plans for his son's millennial reign, and the invitation had been extended to Israel. That reign would have begun immediately had Israel's acceptance, belief in him as Messiah, uh, accepted him. But the preaching of John the Baptist, Jesus, and the disciples had largely been ignored, which up to that time had been done exclusively and only to the nation Israel. Remember the phrase, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. That's literal. If all Israel would repent, change their mind from not believing to believing in the Messiah and accept him as Messiah's Savior, then the kingdom of God is at hand. Riddle will start immediately there at that time. It didn't happen. Millions of years, uh, thousands of years have gone by. The nation Israel would even kill those extending the offer. Finally, in AD 70, approximately 40 years after Christ's death and resurrection, the Roman army would come, kill most of the Jews living in Jerusalem, and destroy the temple. So now, point B. This parable of the kingdom of heaven on the earth presented by Jesus to the Jewish rulers focuses in on the wedding banquet within that kingdom of heaven on the earth, and that's in view. The wedding banquet for God's Son. Notice that the previous parables provide a picture of the kingdom of heaven. And this parable does likewise as it draws a parallel of a wedding banquet, which evidently takes place within the kingdom of heaven. 
which a father has prepared for his son. This obviously limits the scope of the parable to not an entire picture of the kingdom of heaven, a wide out view, but to a slice of that entire picture, panned in, not panoramic. So the banquet is a pan in view of the kingdom of heaven, not a panoramic one. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to, keep in mind that our Lord is presenting a picture of a portion of the kingdom of heaven on earth, the wedding banquet. This is a pan in view, not a panoramic view. Anything outside of that is not in view. Note that the previous parables, the parable of the two sons and the landowner, have the same vignette characteristic, portraying a different aspect of the future kingdom of heaven as do many of our Lord's parables on the subject. This is a very important thing to realize because the end of the parable is often used as a proof text by this loss of salvation, lordship salvation proponents if the scope of this parable covers all of the kingdom of heaven. So outside of the banquet is outside of the millennial rule, outside of the kingdom of heaven? No, not so. It's just outside of the banquet. Otherwise it would have said so. So, the banquet setting is on the earth during our Lord's millennial rule. Picture what the kingdom of heaven is like in terms of the parable scenario in light of New Testament revelation. Although New Testament revelation of the wedding banquet provides some detail that the immediate hearers of Matthew 22 would not immediately perceive if at all, this does not rule out the consideration of such detail for application to the passage under consideration even for the immediate hearers who may later realize such detail in their physical lifetimes. But this revelation is especially significant for all mankind to perceive later on, such is the nature of biblical progressive revelation, and especially prophecy. So first, point E, the wedding banquet, the wedding of the Lamb, rather, not the banquet, the wedding of the Lamb to his bride, the church, which is in heaven. Remember, the banquet is in, on earth. Then comes the second coming the judgment of nations, the wedding banquet and on the earth during our Lord's millennial rule. So Revelation 19, the wedding of the Lamb to his bride, the church, has taken place in heaven already while the tribulation raged on the earth for seven years. Revelation 19, 1, 7, 9, 11 to 16. So we have 19, 1 of Revelation. After these things I heard, as it were, a loud voice of a great multitude in heaven, saying, Hallelujah, salvation and glory and power belong to our Lord, our God. Notice that the wedding is in heaven with a great multitude joyfully shouting praises to God. And this joyful rejoicing continues relative to the wedding of the Lamb. And verse 7, 19 Revelation, Let us rejoice and be glad and give the glory to Him, for the marriage of the Lamb has come and His bride has made herself ready. Then the angel who was providing God's revelation to the Apostle John in Revelation 1, 1 told John, to write, Blessed are those who are invited to the wedding supper of the Lamb, in anticipation of that momentous event to be held on the earth soon after our Lord's second coming. So unbelievers are not going to be invited to the wedding supper of the Lamb. And he, the angelic messenger to John, said to me, Apostle John, write, Blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, "Those, These are true words of God. And then before the banquet begins, there is a first preparation for an execution of our Lord's Second coming, <clears throat> and there it is, Revelation 19.11. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he who sat upon it is called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he judges and wages war. And his eyes are a flame of fire, and upon his head are many diadems, crowns, and he has a, a name written upon the him which no one knows except himself. In verse 13, and he is clothed with a robe dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which are in heaven, clothed in fine linen, white and clean, were following him on the cross on white horses, on white horses. And from his mouth came, comes a sharp word, sword, so that with it he may smite the nations, and he will rule them with a rod of iron. And he treads the winepress of the fierce wrath of God and the Almighty. And on his robe and on his thigh he has a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. So, Further qualification, other scripture passages support an earthly banquet. Let's verify this. The, the wedding supper in heaven is a different event from the wedding supper of the Lamb on the earth. The wedding ceremony in heaven is a different event from the wedding supper of the Lamb on the earth. 